the data cloud diaries, using data spaces to separate your data and the extra steps required to connect to some of the connection pathways. Today, we're back into the data cloud diaries. And one of the key features is data spaces. It allows you to create a separate space to put your D data streams, your DLOs, data lake objects, DMOs. And typically, most people will be using the default data space. But in my testing, I created my own data space and I found some of the intricacies that you, and challenges that you face with data spaces. So what I'm gonna do today is we're just gonna zero in on the data space, what it does, and what are the extra steps required when you're connecting to get the data. So here we are in Salesforce, and what we can do is we're gonna go in and you create a data space. And I've created one called Steve TechArc. And this is one I've been using, and that's how I've been running into some of the challenges. So in a data space, you have data lake objects um, and different data model objects. So these objects are separate objects in their own space. And you might use this in order to have separate divisions or keep your data set, have different sets of data inside of data cloud. And so when we were to query things, if we were gonna to go to Data Explorer, you would choose your data space. So here I am choosing Steve TechArc, and I go see my data model objects, and then I have a list. There is my arrow airplane traffic. Now if I go to default data model objects, it's not gonna be there. Now a consequence of creating a data space is that to control access in your Salesforce core org, it creates a permission set. So we're gonna go into permission sets. And in the permission set, it automatically created this permission set called Steve TechArc. Um, so this permission set was automatically created and grants access to this data set. So that way Salesforce core users can get access. So this way you can have some users with access to one data space and some users with access to another data space. So that was a key element, is knowing about the permission set, being able to alternate to the data space, um, and going from there. But I have found certain areas are not every area is data space aware. Here's in data transformations, I create a new data transformation and I choose a new batch data transformation. And then I choose, let's say my data lake objects, and then from there, I'm in a data transformation, I add the input data, and now I'm seeing my arrow data traffic. So this is available. So I can see my arrow airport traffic is available. Now if I go back and create a new one and make it a streaming, now you'll notice that it's not. So it's not showing me. So I have noticed that the streaming transformations don't seem to have the, calc the data space awareness. Um, now here's an important article about using data cloud APIs with data spaces. And one of the key elements is if you're coming through the API, it tells you to exchange an access token for a data cloud token, and then specify the body parameter of data space. It also tells you if you're running a SQL client to create a user property named data space. And if you're using the data cloud connection APIs, you're gonna need the additional parameter. Let's take a moment and first look at this one, the data cloud connection APIs with the additional parameter. Now here is some anonymous, here are some Apex I wrote called show individuals. We're gonna go into debug, and this is querying individual level data. And if we come into here, the code I have, and I've shown this in another video, is we're able to be an Apex and make a SQL query using the CDP query, and this gave us access to the default data space. Now, in order to get access to a non-default, to the non-default data space, here is the same code, but you have to add this parameter right here at the end. So you're gonna go query ANSI SQL v2, and you're gonna add a parameter 
of your data space. So this is how it's indicated in the help. Add this additional parameter and I'm gonna demonstrate it working. So we're gonna go debug, execute, not execute last. We're gonna go debug, execute anonymous. And we're gonna do show airports. So what this is gonna do is my airport data is in a data space and I'm gonna execute And then I'm gonna go into debug only, and you'll see I'm getting my airport data. So this airport data is in a data space. So this works just fine. Passing the data space name into the CDP query. So that is a key element that is learning this additional parameter for your data space name. Now what's important is if we're connecting through Postman, it says exchange your Salesforce access token with the data cloud token and specify the body parameter in data, uh, data space. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Postman and do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the OAuth endpoint. We're gonna authenticate, passing in, I'm doing a password grant type, the low level password grant type, and it's gonna give me a session token. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna exchange that, and in here, you're gonna hit the A360 token endpoint with a grant, here is the grant type. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my token in here and it's going and I'm going to hit send and what it's going to do is it's going to exchange the first token for a data cloud specific token. So now on my next query, I put the bearer token of my second token in here and I'm now able to run a query against this. Let's do take a look at the body. So I'm able to run a query. And the way I can validate that is use my data explorer grab an object, copy the SQL, then go over to the postman, paste it in here, and now I'm able to get my data. So what I've done is if you're gonna go to data spaces, you're gonna need to do a data exchange. I mean a token exchange. So now you need to add the parameter to your Apex class, do the token exchange, and that gives you the access. And you can see that I have access to all of my data space specific data using SQL through Postman, as long as I've exchanged my Salesforce token for a data cloud specific token. Now the last component, it says for SQL, you just create a user specific property and pass it in. I've been working with dBeaver and have not been able to get this to activate. So in here I have the edit the connection. So first we're gonna disconnect. Let's go edit the connection. So here in dBeaver I edit the connection and then it's said to use the driver properties. Here's the driver settings and the driver properties and I'm creating the parameter data space as indicated because it says create a user property data space. And I've done that. So I have my client ID, my client secret, and my data space. But when I'm connecting, I'm only seeing the default data. So this is something I'm gonna continue to research. Um, so it's not perfect yet, but we're getting there. So the data spaces create a second place that you can put your data and you just need the extra steps to get to it, the exchanging the token through Postman or the extra parameter through the Apex connection string. And I'm gonna to continue to dive deeper until I discover how to get it through the SQL access. But I hope this helps somebody who's considering using data spaces. Otherwise, stay on the default data space. It'll work just fine and you won't have these extra steps. I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps somebody sometime. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining Keeping Data in Its Space. Join me same bat time, same bat channel. Subscribe to YouTube, Steve Tech Arc, and www.stevetecharc.com. Thank you very much.